This week, a satellite company is working on allowing people to order beams of sunlight at night. A man just trying to watch the Olympics for free accidentally caught the signal of the North Korean state TV. The reason South Africa and Nigeria hate each other right now has got to be one of the most wildest beefs I've ever seen. And let's talk about it. Is Joe Biden's face real? Or is it a body double wearing Joe Biden's face as a mask? All of that and so much more. Subscribe before December to send me to North Korea. Like the video to avoid a Biblical whipping and let's get cracking in our 50th video on the channel special Okay, let's kick today off with one of the most crazy conspiracies floating around the internet right now is Joe Biden's face real because people have been claiming for a while now that he has a body double who wears a face mask to look like him you know like those high-tech ultra realistic face masks from mission impossible that kind now a lot of their claims come from things like his earlobes looking different throughout the years his eye colors changing his skin folding in strange ways when scratching and him looking taller in some videos and <laughs> we will get to all of those things in particular but the question really is does this technology for a face mask like the Mission Impossible one even exist? Well, huh, here's a crazy story that's actually true. Sometime in the early 90s, the CIA's chief of disguise, yes, that's a real job position, met with President H.W. Bush for the first time and told him that she had something amazing to show him. When he asked what it was, right, it, she said that it was actually a disguise uh, that she was wearing right then and there, only he couldn't spot it. Apparently, he even got up and looked like, you know, went up close to her, still couldn't see it. But then she literally took her face off, revealing that she'd been wearing a mask the entire time. And as Alex is showing you right now, all of this is documented. In fact, she went up on stage at a conference and she was talking about it very openly. So it's not something that's hush hush or taboo. We get it. It happens. You know, those kind of things happen, you know? Now remember that this was over 30 years ago. Since then, things like 3D printing and just technology in general has massively improved. In fact, in 2010, which keep in mind is still 14 years ago, a young Asian guy managed to use one of these masks to impersonate an old white man whose passport he'd stolen. He even got all the way through the Hong Kong airport and even boarded a flight to Canada. And apparently the only reason he was found out was when someone on the plane saw him take the face mask off, which seems like an incredibly dumb thing to do. Why not just wait? And I mean, like, as you've been seeing here with the copious amount of visuals that we've been showing you, face masks, realistic ones, you know, they exist. We all acknowledge that. But one thing to also keep in mind is that military technology is often years ahead of civilian technology. It's just kept classified extremely. I mean, Area 51, come on, like, I don't want to die without knowing what they're cooking up in there. And that's not to mention that the American military come up with some of the most insane ideas that we only find out years later when, you know, this cutting edge technology is no longer cutting edge and they don't really care about it anymore, so they declassify it. For example, we now know that back in 1967, the US started literally controlling the weather in Vietnam. I've spoken about this before, by the way. And they used cloud seeding to produce extra rain and storms on the enemy lines. And I mean, that's without mentioning the Navy trained dolphins, invisibility cloaks and vomit guns, all of which are real. I mean, military technology back then was wild. So Lord knows what they're cooking up nowadays. Area 51, again, whoo, I wanna know. So have the CIA used hyper-realistic face masks as disguises. Yes, the former chief of disguise openly spoke about George Bush trying out a lot of these masks. So it's, no, again, not, we know, yes. But the real question is, does Joe Biden wear a hyper-realistic face mask to cover up the fact that he's dead? like some people are claiming. And <laughs> the answer to that is just keep a really important quote in your mind whenever you're thinking about these kind of questions. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. These claims about Joe Biden in particular uh, are definitely extraordinary, but the evidence, well, not only is it not extraordinary because all we've got is kind of like a little couple pictures here and there in comparisons from like internet sleuths. But on top of that, the evidence that does exist actually points to a far more boring answer, which is facelifts, Botox, hair transplants, and for a lack of a better way to put it, just like old man skin 
<laughs> you know? And I mean, this doctor, for example, that I'm showing you here breaks it all down. I'm not going to play the whole thing because, you know, it's quite long. So watch it if you want to. But I mean, even one of the main claims that people talk about, you know, the earlobes looking different. There are some ultra HD images, which Alex is showing you right now, which uh, show scars by his ears here, which are consistent with the scars that patients get after a facelift. So that could be a very reasonable reason his earlobes have changed. And another thing to keep in mind is that, you know, although disguise technology has improved, so have ultra 4K cameras and 8K cameras from every single angle imaginable and for the ability for those 4K, 8K images and videos to go viral around the world. So remember, those two things have also improved. So it could be argued that it may be harder now than ever before to actually get away with using body doubles. So... But then again, you know, we only have evidence that he doesn't wear face masks. So unless someone's going to go Johnny English style and try and yank his tug at the president of the United States face, um, I guess I can't say conclusively with definitive proof that he doesn't. So believe what you want to believe. Let's move on. This next one is actually hilarious. So this Canadian man one day was, you know, just trying to scan the airwaves and try and watch the Olympics for free when he accidentally lands on North Korean state TV. Oh, uh, and what happens next is wild uh, because it also turns out that they sneakily watch the Premier League I didn't know that they were allowed to do that. That's like the devil's content, no? Anyway, thinking that he might get shut out of this, uh, you know, this, this channel, Peter began recording the bizarre content playing, and he said that once he started watching, he couldn't stop. Makes a lot of sense, actually. <laughs> I mean, propaganda. He then begins to upload tens of hours of this footage to YouTube for everyone to watch. So, I mean, bro was just trying to watch the Olympics for free, but then ends up feeding the entire world unseen North Korean propaganda. A lot of which you're now about to watch, funnily enough. Now, what programs do they play in North Korea? Because this is, is bizarre. So overnight, it's completely dead. They don't play anything. It's just these colored bars. So if you're a North Korean uh, with, a, with a TV and you try and turn it on at night, forget it. <laughs> Which is just so unrelatable. Imagine actually, you know, wanting something to do. 12 a.m., you're chilling in your bed. Oh, I can't sleep. You know, turn it on. You're used to like Babe Station or something. No. They don't even have the like weird programs on at 3 a.m. <laughs> Thinking about that actually, uh, on the topic of Babe Station, I wonder if North Korea has, you know what, and Alex is like suggesting what I'm talking about right now. Alex, you jot that down for a potential investigation. I would love to know the answer to that. Anyway, bit of a weird tangent. So, uh, Overnight doesn't work, but every day their morning broadcast begins 8 a.m. sharp with the national anthem and, you know, these glory songs for their former leaders. And for the rest of the day, it's a lot of the kind of stuff that you'd imagine would be played in North Korea. Uh, hours upon hours of songs celebrating the country's greatness, a lot of fireworks in there. Stuff about wars, past, present, future, maybe, potentially, uh, burning the American flag and Kim Jong-un getting oiled up. Um, sorry, getting embroiled in conversations about the country's oil reserve. A lot of that. But there are also some unexpected haymakers in there, you know, like cartoons for children, which are just creepy to the bone. And there's even a couple of movies in there, which... <laughs> And I know for a fact we are not going to get copyrighted by North Korea, so we can we could play the entire movie if we wanted to, which we won't. But uh, these th these movies look like they were made 50 years ago, but they're probably made in 2024. Break cutting edge movie sequences here. No idea what the plotline is for this one in particular, but at the end, you know, their coal mine gets blown up, uh, and boy, Marvel has some competition with this one. Run it, Alex. <coughs>
I don't know why they, they decided in the middle of the movie to like freeze frame. Maybe like, <laughs> maybe the actual footage was so bad that like, I right, just freeze it and, and that'll be good. Just imagine if that's what North Koreans are used to. Just imagine if you showed them, you know, like a movie like Endgame with the CGI and stuff in there. That would be equivalent to me showing you a movie made in like 2050. It would blow your mind. Oh, and another thing I didn't expect, they play Premier League highlights. Okay, firstly, didn't know that foreign sport was allowed. Secondly, how is that legal? How do they have the rights for that? I mean, like, obviously, they probably can do what they want. What is the Premier League gonna do? Sue them? Tell them to stop? They'll nuke us for that. But I mean, like, yeah, if you ever want to, like, dive deep and, like, willingly watch the TV programming that, you know, they're forced to watch, then <laughs> I'll link Peter's YouTube channel in the bio or something. Actually, you know what? I don't know if I should even link that. That's literally, like, I'm telling you to go watch propaganda. N not. I need to watch out because, you know, like, they might think I'm, I'm like a North Korean propagandist by now. I'm speaking a lot about them. I am on this mission to be like one million followers send me back to the motherland. Actually, speaking about subscribing for a million followers, I'm creating a real whip wall. Every video from this point forth, I'm gonna randomly generate three victims that commented on the previous video, write their names on the whip wall, and then use them as examples to strike so much fear into theirs and everyone else watching's heart that no one will ever forget to like the video ever again because this keeps on happening. I mean, I didn't want it to come to this, but this fear seems to be the only thing that will remind you guys, so... <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> I can't show any weakness. Ugh. Right, the first three from the last video are these three victims. All right, I want everyone to see the first victims of a heinous crime. But how dare you get to like the no. Scary sh**. You never want to be a part of those poor busts. Let me get these with a lightsaber. Well, <laughs> you know what? Alright, that's fine, that's fine. They, they, they've had enough. They've had enough. Okay, with that out the way, oh, let's move on. Alright, and this is onto a brilliant story. You guys need to hear about this because this is genuinely one of the <laughs> craziest stories I've ever reported on. A few days ago, some people in South Africa thought it would be funny to go on Bolt and see if they could order a fake ride all the way in Nigeria, all right? They're not even close to each other. Just Alex is showing you the map. They're not even close. So how it allows you to book a ride in another country is beyond me, but this is why it gets so bad. Now, when they realized, yes, they could, and when the driver actually got to the pickup location, they would cancel their ride, not only wasting the driver's time, but also a lot of the driver's fuel. For example, this guy said that he's a driver in Nigeria and uh, he had about 30 rides cancel on him uh, in one day. Now, I've heard some people say that this is, this is uh, actually a TikToker, but the point is the same. He said that he thought there was a South African conference in town because all of the requests came under South African names. No problem. Since you want to destroy my life, I will destroy yours. They thought it was so funny that they started posting, you know, all of these videos and stuff on Twitter with captions like, request a Nigerian ride challenge. But it wasn't long until Nigerians picked up on what was going on. And this is where things got serious. Because keep in mind, Nigeria is a country of over 220 million people. 70% of which is under 30. 40 something, 42% is under the age of 15. And the internet is a young person's game. Nigerians ordered and canceled so many rides in South Africa that it triggered extreme bolt surge pricing in Cape Town and Johannesburg, leaving a lot of South Africans stranded on the streets due to unavailable or overly expensive lifts. Insane. Oh, and they didn't stop there because after they discovered that you could also order other things outside of just lifts like food, TVs, refrigerators, all with the option to pay on delivery, I think you know where this is going, they started ordering these things in bulk to random people's houses 
in South Africa. The situation got so bad that the BBC started reporting on it and even Bolt's manager in Nigeria released a statement saying that they're gonna do everything they can to block orders from outside the country. Don't know why they didn't do that before. Uh, but the latest is that the war still rages on between South Africans and Nigerians. <laughs> I told you how bizarre that something like that can even happen. Wild world we live in. Ah, <sighs> all right. Moving on. Okay, I love this next story. It is fascinating. A California startup is currently working on selling sunlight to people at night by using mirrors on satellites to reflect the sun rays back down to Earth. Best way to imagine it uh, is like Uber Eats but for sunlight. By using their planned constellation of 57 small satellites orbiting Earth, they would like to do the following. Let's say hypothetically it's midnight, but you know, you're not feeling like you want, you don't want to go to sleep. You want to go in the back garden and you want to catch a tan, right? Don't know why you want to do that. So you whip out your phone, you order 30 minutes of sunlight on the Reflect Orbital app. You grab some cold ones and some sunscreen, head out to the back garden, and a few minutes later, boom, you're cooking. <laughs> Or let's talk about the less recreational side of things. Let's say you own a solar farm, right? But at night, you're not making any money. You're not producing any power for our world. Well, order some sunlight, uh, and now you would uh, have access to endlessly available and sustainable power for infinity and beyond. I don't even know anymore. Now, the two founders of Reflect Orbital believe that sunlight is the new oil. They want to commoditize sunlight. Interesting. And they also conveniently completed their final on-Earth testing a year ago. So yeah, they're cooking. They did this by fitting mirrors onto hot air balloons floating 1.7 miles above solar panels, which as you can see by the graph, they put the little spotlight on the panels, it boosts it, take it off, drops it back down. So kind of like proof of concept. But they will have to take those mirrors and then increase it by 365 miles higher. So not like it's that simple to do. <laughs> and because of that, there's been large criticism and doubt around the idea. But despite that, according to their website, a prototype of their light reflecting satellites will make its way to orbit next year. 2025. They've even, and this is, this is my favorite part, uh, they've opened applications for sunlight to be delivered in Q4 2025 for a duration of four minutes and a diameter of five kilometers. So if you want to do that thing when you're chilling in the back garden, don't do it. Every one of your neighbors is going to be hit with bright light. They're going to think it's a corn casserole. Sorry, beep, UFO. And you know what? Speaking about that, I am going to apply for this. And I've also messaged the founder of all of this because when I spoke about it on Twitter and doing all of that, he reposted that video. So I think we could get some sneaky little connections in there. Don't want to be overly optimistic, but you know, video of ordering sunlight on an app uh, coming in 2025 to yours, that, that, yeah. I was asking about to ask Alex to create a thumbnail. No, Alex, don't do that, please God. Actually, Alex do, but make it the, this, you have a time limit of five minutes, literally time limit. I want to see that time limit of five minutes to create next year's I ordered sunlight to my house <laughs> at 12 o'clock. That's it. Well done, Alex. You are king. And to be honest, they're not even the only ones working on this orbiting mirror concept on a satellite. Russia experimented with this idea all the way back in the 1990s. And for a short time, apparently it actually worked before it didn't. And by 1990s, I have a suspicion that this is the 1960s, but I may have mistyped some information in here. Apparently it fell back into Earth's atmosphere only a few hours later and they never tried it again, so hmm. And then also currently, 2024, the University of Glasgow is leading a research project called Sol Space. And they're testing the idea of doing something very similar to Reflect Orbital and they wanna power solar panels around the clock. But just for a second, all right? Grasp your mind on a future reality you know, 2026, where this is actually possible, right? Let's just think about it. On the one side, it could revolutionize sustainable energy production. And if you could do that by lowering a lot of the cost of electricity, you would automatically lower the cost of a whole bunch of other things that require electricity, like manufacturing, like food production, like transportation, healthcare, and a whole lot more. And all of that would boost the economy. It could be fantastic. But there's always a trade-off for things, and it's always, it always is too good to be true, hey? Because on the flip side, there could very well be unintended consequences for disrupting Earth's natural cycles. We could completely 
up the environment. And that's not even to mention the economic disparities that could be there, where, you know, where endless sunlight is a privilege that only the rich could afford. Imagine that. Either way, it is a fascinating idea that I will keep my eye on. Let's move on. Okay, let's move on to our rapid fire section. Damn, you know what, Alex? We actually really do need an intro for our rapid fire section. You know, kind of like the intro for the news daddy, which, fun fact for anyone watching and didn't know, you know those angelic, like, news daddy sounds? It's actually me. Uh, Alex and I worked on that, like, way back when, and I just kind of, like, blessed the microphone with my angelic voice to create that. I can't really think of anything now uh, for rapid fire section. Can we think of anything now? Rapid fire. Rapid fire. Rapid by tire liar. Rapid. Rapid news from your poos. Rapid, 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 rapido. Speedy Gonzalez news coming out to you. Okay, I can't think of anything right now, but um, placeholder. Lose. With explosions in the background and it's, uh, I'm sure it's looking epic if Alex has time. If Alex doesn't have time, boy, that's gonna be weird. Rapid Fire News! Australia just passed the first of its kind new law called the Right to Disconnect. Which is actually cooler than it sounds because a survey published last year estimated that Australians worked an average of 281 hours of unpaid overtime annually in the spirit of rapid fire and more than 20 other countries including europe and latin america are very similar so because of that the australian said fuck corn casserole you and they said we've got a right to disconnect and it also allows them to ignore everyone's communications after hours uh, if they choose to without feeling punishable by their bosses which we all hate alex it is not for you <laughs> <laughs> you don't have that. You're in Canada where we send you to hard labor. W Australia, moving on. Next, a burglar in Italy, Rome was caught. A, blur a burglar, a thief, a naughty thief. Um, a burglar, a burglar, what the f- How the f do you say that? A burglar, a burglar was caught. Burglar, burglar, fuck it. All right, a burglar, I don't know how you say it in- A burglar in Rome was caught. A burglar, a burglar in- a burglar in <laughs> a burglar in court. No, in burglar a burglar in Rome was a burglar in Rome. A burglar in court. A burglar in Rome was caught after stopping to read a book on Greek mythology mid robbery while he was robbing the house. Apparently, the 71-year-old homeowner is said to have woke up and confronted the thief, who was just sat down fully engrossed in the book. Caught off guard, he tries to run away, uh, but he was arrested shortly after. News of the failed robbery attracted the attention of the book's author, who told local media he wanted to send the man a copy so that he could finish his read. Next, a popular rapper in Philadelphia known as YBC Duel and Mr. Disrespectful, who went viral last year for digging up the grave of an op while he was beefing with another gang, was just shot and killed by an op two days ago. Next! This is the heart-stopping moment a bunch of hikers who were told not to hike up there started running for their lives as a volcano in Indonesia began erupting. You silly little... Local news said that all of those photographed have been blacklisted now from ever going up there again. Again, naughty little. Next! I don't know if I should even keep this one in. <laughs> <laughs> this one is, oh, this made me laugh so much. So this poor guy took to Twitter and, you know, you wanted to ask people to do that thing where they Photoshop, you know, the bad stuff in the background, like the poll and other people, so it could look more majestic. Terrible decision. Twitter said, bet. And they created image one, image two, image three, image four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. You get the point. Never ask the internet to do anything good for you. And then, for our final story of the day, because I am losing my mind, we got another billionaire getting into a vessel and going on a dangerous voyage tomorrow, or today for you. What could go wrong? <laughs> So probably as you're watching this video, this billionaire and three other people are launching into space on the first ever commercial spacewalk with SpaceX. And if they are successful, it will mark the first time in history that civilians or non-government astronauts will have carried out such a mission. And not only that, but they are planning to go further than any other human has ever traveled since NASA's Apollo mission over 50 years ago. So this is a big flipping deal. Specific measurements, they're passing through the Van Ellen radiation belt. Anyway, the billionaire and one of the other SpaceX crew will spend about 15 minutes outside each uh, to test their new cutting edge SpaceX designed suits. 
they look pretty cool. Over the course of five days that they'll be up there, the crew will carry out a wide range of research, including high-tech laser communications using Starlink, and 36 mostly biomedical experiments in partnership with 31 institutions. And they're going to be launching on the 27th of August, uh, and they have a four-hour window in which to fly. So uh, by the time you're seeing this, they've either completed it, or if something went wrong, this is really not gonna age well, but I doubt anything will go wrong. And with my brain and life at stake, that is the end of the video, woo! With that being said, please subscribe. Don't forget to like the video or the whippings will be yours. Whip, 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 Haru. <laughs> oh, okay, that's good enough. I'm done. I'm done. I want an extra big explosion for the first story today, alright? Okay, right, let's get into it.